Welcome back to Take 5 Friday, where we talk the people and process behind making and maintaining the U.S. diplomatic presence around the world. This week, OVO's Construction Operations Division Chief, Chris Dudding, is talking with Rod Caesar, Senior Vice President of Cadell Construction International. Rod has more than 45 years of construction experience in a wide range of roles and responsibilities, including construction executive, multiple project director, on-site project manager, senior estimator, project engineer, design coordinator, and business development representative. His experience with the special challenges of international design and construction has made his expertise in this area unrivaled in the industry. Rod combines extensive technical expertise with an ability to organize and direct the entire project life cycle. From identifying new project opportunities to estimating project execution and successful closeout. He earned a Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering from Christian Brothers University in Memphis, Tennessee. Chris Dudding is a graduate of Iowa State University and has been a licensed professional engineer in the state of Iowa since 2010. As OBO's Division Director for Construction Operations, Chris oversees nearly $14 billion in active construction programs worldwide, composed of 60 major projects. He was named as one of Engineering News Record Mid-Atlantic Magazine's Top 20 Under 40 and has received two Superior Honor Awards and one Meritorious Honor Award by the Department of State. We're very excited to have them both with us today. Welcome. Hello, Rod Caesar. My name is Chris Dudding. I'm the head of construction operations, and I'm talking today with Rod Caesar, senior vice president of Cadell International. Hello, Rod. How are you doing today? I'm great, Chris. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Thanks for calling. Uh, thanks. So what we do with this is we just talk about our program. We talk about contractors we work with, people we work with, and we're more interested in the people. Uh, but you, uh, you're, you lead Cadell and uh, uh, one of the largest contractors in our program right now. Yes, I'm, I'm in charge of all the projects that we have for the State Department and the embassy program. All right, that's great. Well, let me ask you this. So how did you get into building embassies overseas? Well, uh, believe it or not, I hope I look, don't look my age, but uh, I've been, my experience is about 50 years almost. And most of that has been overseas. And um, in 1995, I went to work for a company that had a project, the U.S. Embassy in Nicosia, Cyprus. And that was the first time I'd been involved with, uh, with an embassy project. And a few years went by, and in, in 2005, I had known uh, members of the Cadell family for quite some time, and Kirby Cadell called me and uh, said, hey, we've got a lot of work we're doing for the U.S. government, doing U.S. embassies all over the world. And are you interested in coming and helping us out? And I, I jumped at the idea. I thought it would be great to get back into the overseas work. And I had enjoyed the, the involvement with the job in Nicosia. So that's how I ended up with Cadell in 2005 and involved with uh, embassy projects. And uh, I think we had maybe seven or eight at the time. And since then, we probably added a number, th uh, maybe 30 more by now. So it's, uh, it's been quite a ride. That's right. And so what, what projects uh, have been the most meaningful to you over the years? Um, Chris, I, you know, I thought about meaningful and, and there, there are a lot of different ways to look at it. You know, certainly the, uh, the the biggest and the the most challenging job uh, was the one that we did in uh, Kabul, Afghanistan, and those were a, a series of additions to to various buildings. We were there for about a decade, and uh, you know it was a war zone. We had border closures, port closures, and even a ship hijacking that happened uh, during the job. And you don't get that sort of experience uh, you know, on any other kind of project. From a name standpoint and, and uh, in terms of meaningfulness, you know, the job in Kathmandu and Moscow, you know, those names for everybody kind of jump out. Oh, that must have been exciting and that sort of thing. Uh, I think one of the other meaningful parts of this is, you know, you cannot imagine the impact that these embassy projects have in some of the poor countries of the world. Uh, and it's it's been rewarding to see that sort of thing. So I think from that standpoint, 
the projects in West Africa, uh, countries like Mauritania, uh, Burundi, you know, come to mind real quick as, as having an impact on the community. Yeah, that's right. So even my, even my this is my personal hard hat. I think I have two Cadell stickers on there. I have Mexico City, Mexico City, and then of course I have Afghanistan there. So I collect the stickers. So safety, safety guys mumble something when I start projects about expiration dates of hard hats. Oh, listen, that's all we hear about, man. They check the expiration dates so you can't get any history on your hard hat. You know, if you're if you're completely legal. I, I mumble something about my cold, dead hands in response, but Cadell was in Kabul for a decade, and Cadell was there right up, and we can't talk too much about it publicly, but Cadell was there right up until the bitter, bitter end, and uh, doing warranty work, as I understand it. Yes, we had, uh, I think at the time that we left, we had maybe, we had one American citizen working there, and uh, he had been there David had been there probably almost the entire time, maybe nine of the 10 years that we were there. We had one other foreign national and we had maybe two dozen Afghani workers that were doing various warranty items. Yeah, well, let me let me just say this. Uh, so, you know, we've had people who spent just years and years, decades, including myself, in and around Afghanistan and um, had a little bit of a crisis of, uh, uh, resilience, if you will, you know, what, what does that mean? Having spent all those years and we're no longer there, uh, although we, we as the State Department hope to go back, but I will say this, those facilities in Afghanistan did their job right up until the last minute that this country needed them. So on behalf of the department and the bureau and myself, to all the Cadell folks who rotated in and out of Kabul over all those years. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Well, I, pr I appreciate that, Chris. Absolutely. So, uh, so let me ask you. So we heard about some of the challenges in Kabul, but how are how about some challenges from other locations? Well, there there are always challenges in in other locations. You know, we 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 really kind of fly under the radar as construction people. We don't um, we don't have a big target on ourselves. So the the challenges we have are are mostly logistics. Uh, trucks break down. I, I'm I'm one of the things that I remember that most vividly, we we were, had the pro, had the project in uh, Bujumbura, Burundi, and we had uh, a chiller that came from the United States. You know, it goes to a port on the east coast. It gets on a ship, gets all the way to uh, the the uh, east coast of Africa, and gets on a truck, drives all the way to the bougian board of the job site and it's sitting out there waiting to be offloaded and the uh the landing gear on the trailer collapses and the chiller falls over and fortunately wasn't totally damaged but you know you have that sort of thing where it takes you literally four and five months to manufacture something another two or three months to ship it and then the dead gum thing falls over on the ground right in front of the job site uh that's the kind of thing that we have uh happen to us and we deal with it. And that's kind of what makes this job so interesting. It, it's, it's a challenge and it's definitely a challenge you don't get uh, doing anything else, doing any other projects in the world. Our projects no. are complex and they're also far away and, uh, and, and places that you're not supposed to get things uh, done. So, uh, so that's great. So in terms of uh, uh, what keeps you in this program, Rod? What what keeps you motivated and inspired? You know, Chris, one of, one of the, there are actually several things. You know, the impact that we have on these communities. I, I mentioned that earlier, but, you know, I'm always pleased to see the, uh, the impact that we have on the workforce. You know, we have these workers that come to us, they, they maybe have minimal skills, uh, by the time the job is over, they've, they've learned to craft. Uh, they've learned how to do it safely. Uh, we hope they've improved the level of quality and such like that, that um, uh, what they're used to doing in that particular country. And so that's one of the things that, that has a, a, a big impact on my thinking and what keeps me kind of motivated and is seeing the improvement in the, the labor force and hopefully you know we're we're not going to be there forever in terms of, of construction 
And when we're gone, maybe those guys move on to another project and, you know, their, their work level improves and safety and everything else. And they teach other folks the things that we've tried to pass on. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's, that's the real secret is, you know, we're building these uh, embassies for, there's a purpose and it's to bring the countries together and uh, people are inspired by that. And it's meaningful to a lot of people. So they're not normal projects and you do meet these incredibly talented people on the way uh, that is uh, uh, inspiring to me personally as well. So uh, I know they, uh, they they come from all shapes and sizes, all different backgrounds to coming here. They, we believe in this mission. We believe in a better world. We're going to make this building. We're going to make the place where that's going to happen. You know, Chris, one other thing that, that's, um, and I don't know that it's appreciated by most of the people that uh, that are not familiar, deeply familiar, but you know, we're building some very secure facilities, and I don't know how many employees the the U.S. government has around the world. I would guess hundreds of thousands of people. And you know, people ask me, you know, aren't you afraid to go here? Aren't you afraid to go there? And I'm like, you know, I'm going to one of the most secure facilities that 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 is being built today. And you know, when we leave and go away, you know. You can't believe some of the well, you've seen them. You can believe some of the places that uh, we move out of and into these new and improved facilities that uh, that are very secure. And I, I hate to say it, it's unfortunate, but you know there are folks in the world that somehow think they improve the situation by killing innocent people, and you know we're kind of keeping that from happening. And that's that's a big deal to me. Yeah, I, I've been, uh, I've been. Sometimes I'll say I feel like these embassies are kind of pinning down a world that threatens the, the spin-off, and uh, we do build them extremely securely to protect the Americans serving overseas, the local staff who's working with us, the visitors, the uh, people who come to our into our facilities are highly protected, and uh, uh, you know, and Cadell builds those builds those buildings and builds those walls, and we're deeply appreciative of all of that. Thank you. I'll throw in one soundbite about. Sure. Uh, you asked about inspiration at some point in this thing, and I thought that that's an interesting word. And uh, you know, with a 50-year career, you can you can guess that you know I'm closer to the end of the runway than than I was 50 years ago. And you know, one of the things that, that in, inspires a lot of people, you know, in the construction business, we're building something that's going to be there long after we're gone. And uh, you know. I could do this in Montgomery, Alabama, and there are lots of buildings around here, but man, to do this halfway around the world and to have the, the U.S. government uh, behind us and helping us with that, I, I think is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Rod. Thank you for joining us. I think you're absolutely right. Seeing that flag go up makes it all worth it. Seeing the countries come together that we're bringing together makes it all worth it. And uh, uh, doing it in the spaces that Cadell helped us create means quite a bit to us. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thanks for the call. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Take 5 Friday. We hope you'll join us again next week for a conversation with OBO's Director of Architecture, Curtis Clay, and Marilee Hanks, owner and principal of Nod's Design. See you then.